When is it science and when is it playing God? I think this refers to uh, when we talked about the vaccines. vaccines. Yes. When are you playing God? When are you practicing science? Now, when is when is it good, and when is it not good? What? Now, I was a scientist myself. I also was involved in experimentation. I was part of the ethics committees of the universities where we had to discuss and evaluate the ethics of any scientific experiment that is undertaken. Now, when is it science and when is it playing God? Is there anything wrong with investigating the way things work in the universe? No. No. That is man's inquiring mind, and God gave us inquiring minds, and we want to know. The Bible tells us that Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, was an expert in zoology. He was an expert in botany. He was an expert in many, many things. So it is part of human nature to study nature. When you start placing yourself above the God of nature, then you are starting to play God. Now, when it comes to the genetic system, this gets a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. If you're saying that you can improve the genetic system, then you don't believe that God made it perfect. Mm. And therefore... You will be playing God when you try to do that. Now let's make a, another situation. What if through sin and deterioration, uh, genetic aberrations came into the world, which they did, and these genetic aberrations cause disease? Can you repair that if it is within your capability? In other words, can you intervene in the genetics knowing full well that you are altering the blueprints of cells? In my opinion, just my opinion, if you can correct a wrong that has occurred or something that has become uh, or that has deteriorated. That is science. And you can, you can uh, cure diseases this mm. way. If you have gene sequences missing and you replace them with the correct one by placing them into stem cells, etc., etc., and, and correcting what went wrong, and thereby alleviate suffering, suffering. That is not playing God. Mm. That is using what is there. When you start adding genes, in other words, to give capabilities that were originally not planned, and therefore you are altering the blueprint of God, mm. then you are playing God. Yeah. So when you want to amalgamate animal genes with human genes, then you are playing God because God created them in kinds yeah. with tremendous variability. Mm. A kind was not a species. A kind was probably at the level of a family. So you would have a family, let's say the dog family belongs to the canids, the Gang. Yeah. The Canidae, and every one that fits into that family would be the jackal, the fox, the wolf, mm. uh, all the dogs varieties that we have, they would all be of the family Canidae. So they're all canids. So that is one category. And if you took one pair of those, then the gene variability for everything that exists in the world today was present in that. Uh, when you start mixing kinds mm. genetically, by force, amalgamating them, 
and you're playing God. Mm. Then you're messing with the blueprint. So anything that is for the advancement of health, mm. uh, correcting things that have gone wrong, that would be making a proper use of science. Mm. It's a very fine line. It's a very fine line, and where you draw it mm. depends on your parameter, the, your moral parameter. Like you also said in the previous one, if your outset point is evolution, then most probably you will be trying to play God. If it's evolution, then you obviously think you can improve everything. Now, even if you take uh, the manipulation of fruits and vegetables and grains, etc., and we think that we can improve yield mm. and all of these things. Now, if you go back into uh, history, when you go back to, let's say, Egypt, the grain that yes. was there, how many corns did it have in it? A hundred. Now, today, if you have 50, you are really pushing it. You will be overjoyed if you get 50. So have we improved or have we gone back? Okay, gone back. Yeah, there's been a deterioration. Now, I have no problem with breeding programs to get the very best yield that you can have. But once you start adding genes then you are changing the physiology. You don't know what the effect of that added gene is. For example, if you add the growth gene uh, to the genetic makeup of something, let's say the growth genes, the, the genes that code for growth hormone in pigs, mm. and you translocate that into another species, then you will get or even to the same species, if you double it up, yeah. you will get giant pigs. And some of them are so diseased mm. because they're not, the rest of the body is not designed for this doubling up. Mm. So that you have to keep them alive with antibiotics. They can't even walk. You have to squirt them down with hoses. And you say that is an improvement because you're getting a bigger yield. Mm but you're getting a very unhealthy yield. Is yeah. that something that you would like to eat? Something that is exceedingly unhealthy mm. and has been kept alive with antibiotics and all kinds of things? Yeah. And what, what if you start translocating genes across species? Or maybe even from animal to plant. They've translocated genes from pigs into tomatoes. Mm. Is it then still a tomato? It might still look like it, but how is its physiology affected? How is the combination yeah. uh, affected? So uh, I'm, I'm one to f say, let's take the very best genetic systems that we have and propagate those. Mm. And if you can get great yields then, well then fine but you don't have to genetically manipulate it in order to get what you have to do. So it's a very fine line, yeah. and depending on who you talk to, you'll get a different answer.